of Graffiti Artists Talk Live. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, man. Likewise, always, man. Yes, love, yes. Man. Um, I, I, early up on top, I was mentioning how we go back uh, before graffiti. It's like you're um, like a cousin. Uh, our, our, our parents, our moms were good friends. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely. We were spray painting in uh, skippies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, going back to that. Hey, listen, so we're going to jump right in. And um, I'm just going to read a little bit about you, uh, as I customarily do, do a little bio on, on folks so that um, people get a little background. Let me just set myself up here um, and get this going. Uh, I'm not getting the contrast I like normally. OK. Um, so. Uh, William Cordero, a.k.a. Uh, Bill Blast, uh, is a native, New York City native. Um, and in the early 80s, he was part of a group of subway riders that eventually made it to shift to the gallery scene. Uh, he primarily painted on walls of basketball courts and has, in fact, very few trains to his credit. In 1982, in what became commonly known as Rocksteady Park, Bill painted two masterpieces on opposite side of a Hamble court. The first was entitled Sky's the Limit, referencing the lyrics in Keep On by the group D-Train. And the painting consisted of several prominent New York City landmarks and created an urban backdrop for the empowering message inherent within the lyrics. The second mural was entitled Eye of the Tiger. Today, the murals are long gone, um, uh, but it's widely remembered for being so important as the fabric of hip hop through the Rocksteady crew, and as well, uh, Malcolm McLaren's uh, famous Buffalo Gals video. Uh, Bill attended the High School of Art and Design, and after working as a consultant on the film Beat Street, uh, he attended Parsons School of Design, where he pursued a career in, um, I'm sorry, a major in painting. And his talent and skills as a professional muralist developed, and he was commissioned to produce large-scale murals for WCBB TV, the ABC News, New York affiliate in Boston, the Port Authority. Uh, he took part in the Art Train project, and you were among the first to go to Europe uh, to ex exhibition at the gallery Yaki Kornblit uh, in Amsterdam, Holland, and have exhibited uh, throughout Europe and in, are in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art. So you have quite a bit of credentials uh, up your sleeve, my friend. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll dig into some of this stuff with you um, but I, I really just want to kind of go back with you. I, I want to take it there to, sure. to Douglas Projects. Oh, Douglas. Right? To where oh. we, we, we grew up. I mean, I happen to, have, as you know, I, I grew up between the South Bronx and these projects. And so mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your, your coming up, um, you know, well, in the 70s in in these projects, because I, I always thought these were very special projects, especially because of the graffiti. Yeah, that, that neighborhood had a lot of uh, writers that got up. Uh, there was uh, Jinx, um, there was uh, No Three, um, Dean, uh, all of the BYB crew, uh, Gene 13. D5. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was the list goes on. I mean, even this other uh, writer, Viper, had some nice tags. But, you know, the uh, inside of it, I bombed it. I pretty much did uh, pieces from my floor all the way down. And, so let's you know, backtrack a little bit because how, you know, I, I started writing early on uh, amongst the group. I was, I, I know I started in the Bronx early and then Kel... I got Kel on, and I mm -hmm. never quite figured out how you started writing. Was it through mm -hmm. us? Well, I think the first time I um, went to the One Tunnel was with Kel. Yeah, that was the first time um, we hit the uh, One Tunnel together, and then I went with the uh, Spanish Five a few yeah. times. And then later on, I hooked up with uh, Doze and Tunir and 
we right. hit the uh, layups. Um, you know, the layups were the best because, you know, they they had them situated right there on my block, 103rd. Yeah. So in those early days, um, I, I, I do want to talk about some of the, 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 you know, the things that were influencing you. Um, mm -hmm. This image that we're seeing is of too near and, and, and you, you used to write pause, but right. actually I, I'm going to skip ahead and come back to that because right. the Spanish five was really important, right? Yes. They, they, uh, uh, that was fed to teen, um, Leo. Uh, match, uh, rate. Match and uh, rate, yes. Ad, ad rock. And ad rock, right? And they were style writers from up in a, around what, 120? Yeah, 125th. They had a clubhouse there. Yes, that the infamous yes. clubhouse. So we got to talk. We're going to dive in a little bit on this, right? Because <laughs> this was really interesting graffiti lore. So the Spanish Five were these young cats, these style writers. And again, if if it rings a bell, they're picking up off the Fabulous Five, right? Yeah, that was the language back then, you know, the uh, IG of the time. Right. And then our response, uh, and I don't know if you were the, the one who started this crew with us, uh, mm -hmm. the TI5. Yeah, TI5, five. yeah, the Incredible Five, yeah. The Incredible Five. Yeah. And so we were sort of rivals with them. Well, you were friendly. Explain this to me. How did that happen that you became well, friends with them? Well, True Rock... He used to, he was in my class, so I also liked his sister, so that, <laughs> that's why we were, uh, became friends, and I went um, piecing with them a few times. Yeah, and uh, Ray was, uh, he wasn't that tall, but, you know, he used to do some, some nice pieces on the one line. But they had this clubhouse, and it was always full of paint, and they had all, all the nice colors, the cascade green. I mean, they were, they also had some some uh, little like a little DJ set up there too. It was cool to hang out with them. Well, I I remember it's a little flashback for you that Ti Five we had a clubhouse too. It was oh yeah, me, me you solo, <laughs> D Rock, and it wow. was and it was up in the elevator shaft. Of yeah, the bus, right. Yeah, 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 man. You know that we had we had a, a big stash house up there of, of uh, a lot of uh, cans, all Red Devil boxes, boxes. Yeah, and and one of the unfortunate things happened. You brought one of the Spanish Five over. I don't know well, who you, it was. You have a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had, they had, uh, took some cans and then we went back there and stole them back. Yeah. And, and then some, we, we, we completely robbed their whole clubhouse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, also, but... what was interesting, they had a very distinct style uh, of lettering um, that was, of course, coming off the 70s. Uh, but you had, a, you started developing a new lettering style with them. T tell oh. me about that. Well, they, they did a lot of stretchers and, um, you know, they, they had this, this type of flair to their, to their letters, but, uh, Ray started doing a lot of, uh, you know, sort of more style, stylized pieces. Um, and, you know, just went home and started doing, uh, some black book pieces and doing a lot of experimental stuff. And so by the time we get to this period in your work, the two near pause, yeah um and two near so so just to get well why don't you tell people a little bit about two oh two near two near is ken swift's brother and you know he was uh my partner at the time so we did a a bunch of whole cars but uh he um also uh used to to dance uh in a lot of clubs so we would go out clubbing and then after that, you know, we would go to the uh, one tunnel or the layup. But I remember one time we went to pick up Kenny to go piece on 103rd because they had it laid up right in the middle tracks. And it was a good, you know, spot because no one would think, hey, who would go there and paint? And uh, we were doing insides and those was there, Frosty Freeze and, and who else? Uh, 
um, Ken Swift and Tunia. So, so we, uh, we're in the insides and we hear someone says that we better get out because we, we're about to be raided. So we, you know, and, and Frosty Freeze and those were going at it. They were, they were, you know, snapping on each other. So we, we jumped onto the tracks and we started heading to 110th Street. So a train was coming and he wouldn't stop. He just kept coming and coming and, and honking his horn and we're running and running. Finally get to the, to the 110th Street station and just jumped onto the platform out of breath. And then the train whizzes by. That was like, I never forget that, that moment. But, uh, you know, early when we picked up Ken earlier, he had uh, had to sneak out of the apartment. And, I mean, we were just like one hell of a night. Why do you, you think know? you put yourself in so much danger to, to write your name? I don't know. Well, it, it, it's, it was, uh, I, I had it bad. I mean, you know, graffiti just consumed my life, man. I mean, I just wanted to uh, get up and, and get better. So the more you paint it, the more, you know, the better you got. So, so uh, you know, I, I mean, even the elevated up there where Kaz is at 207, I remember painting up there. And you're three stories up, cans would fall, but you know, when you see the train coming, you would you would get into the car. And there was a, a bunch of writers that would go there, there was Shock, Rin, Kel, um, Tunir, myself. And I, I kept experimenting with other names like Who Too, Bud, um, Two Wise, and Pause. So I had a few names and, uh, you know, would do, you know, pieces under these different aliases. But, uh, you know, it, it, the other place where we used to go was the ghost yard. And that was a good spot until it, you know, uh, it got burnt out. And then we would go up to the one yard as well. But, you know, those were some uh, fun times. And so one of the things Given, given that we were over by Douglas Projects and you mentioned some of the Rocksteady crew and our affiliation with Rocksteady, oh, yeah. I think it's important that I think people don't understand it, the, the unique thing about Rocksteady, uh, uh, particularly Rocksteady Crew Park. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Rocksteady was a b-boy crew, but it was also a, um, you had a skate division Right. Oh yeah, had, I had my own division, DJ of, division, yeah. a writers division. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I met Kippy first because he lived. Kippy uh, D. Yeah, uh, Kippy D was they, like in the building right next to me. So, you know, he used to try to teach me how to do backflips, but at all the uh, street jams, him and Frosty used to battle everyone, and it was a wrap. I mean, Frosty and, and Kippy, they took everybody out. But, uh, you know, they used to come out with these sound systems that were like up to the second floor of just bass bottoms and you could hear it like 10 blocks away. And then, uh, you know, I would, uh, after that, go to Rocksteady Park where everyone would be in the back practicing. And Rocksteady Park was popping. I mean, that was the place to be. That was, uh, you know, the the practice ground where we would, you know, do a lot of murals on the uh, side of the school. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Frosty Freeze was just fearless. And I mean, doing these flips right off the, uh, yeah, I mean, he would swing. Peace. Yeah, man, rest in peace. He would swing off the swing and land on the uh, fence and then flip off the fence. And it's like, whoa. He was a man back then, yeah. So in, in, infamously, right? You you really put a stamp on Rocksteady Crew Park when you started doing the murals. Uh, I I don't remember. To be honest, I don't remember anybody else doing anything significant on those walls in them days. Do you? Well, I mean, those those were uh, they were important because you know. That was one of the first 
hip hop videos that went global and Michael McLaren and the Buffalo also, Gals in front yeah, of the Buffalo mural, Gals. the sky's yeah. the limit. Yeah, yeah. But this and, wasn't done was this this wasn't done for them specifically. This was uh done on your own. Yeah, that was by yeah, yeah. That was uh from leftover paint from uh Studio fifty four. We had uh, I had a bunch yeah. of cans. Yeah. I used to work at Studio fifty four after that Antonio. Yeah, yeah, uh, I show. that. And I I ended up working there as well for a period of time. Oh yeah. Um, I, which was which is crazy. Yeah, no, it was uh I mean if the <laughs> Mind that you, place... people should know what we were like all of seventeen years old. Oh yeah, we you know the the thing is too is like they uh hired me to do some backdrops and mm -hmm. for a a time period like I wanted to go back and get some of them in the uh basement and uh the legend has it that there was money stashed in the ceilings in the basement <laughs> and I was always trying to find it <laughs> but the, so back, the back to this this piece here because this became really important in in the culture once it was in the video uh, but also, you know, of course, in the neighborhood, it was really popular. And of course, Sky's the Limit, you know, taking on D Train's infamous song, mm -hmm. um, Keep On. Uh, and, and, and again, one of the things that I like about this, it, it's interesting because I thought about this today, uh, particularly, and we'll see this throughout our conversation, how the Statue mm -hmm. of Liberty um, presents itself it, throughout your work and over over many many projects yeah no it was a um an image i used to work with because it's so new york you know i mean it represents new york so you know it was a uh, it was uh, a way to to work it into the skyline yeah and so and, now with with this with this uh being in the video with malcolm mclaren what kind of success came for you after that if any well it um it opened up a few doors i mean uh the the flip side was i the tiger and uh, they used that in the video but you know for which video uh for for the rocksteady crew video the the hey you rocksteady crew video. right 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 so it which, has which went on to be a number one hit in london right right only London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I put my foot in it. <laughs> so I put the footprints up there on the top. But, you know, the uh, those walls are iconic, man, because, you know, they, they went global. And, you know, they uh, definitely got me onto the path of of doing more art and, you know, doing a larger scale. I wanted to supersize it. Right, and, and that, you did a memorial. I remember this one too for for Johnny late in the nineties. Yeah, he died in that park uh, violently, and I knew the family, so I wanted to do uh, the, the 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 flag real big. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember that there was also in uh, Clockers a Spike Lee joint. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the, it, what's interesting, going back to what you just said about thinking about um, once you do the murals and thinking about what to do next and painting. Uh, you know, you went to art and design as well as I did. Um, but also I found this picture of us oh, painting yeah. school. Uh, <laughs> PS9, yeah. you and I did that that mural there. Um, and that was interesting. That's a Just great that, photo. Yeah, right? It, that, you know, we were these kids trying to figure out. Yeah, on, on, only school. you. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was, uh, I remember that, um, it, was, it was a good times wall, and uh, that's a Martha Cooper photograph, and she, she was down there with us, and we, we, you know, they gave us a bunch of paint, and, you know, that, that area was uh, the Los Mosquitos um, section, they, they, they were a big gang in that area. Mm -hmm. And I used to work in that school. I used to work for Dome Project. I used to silk screen a lot of, uh, you know, T-shirts for, for the basketball tournaments. And I also made a few uh, Sky's the Limit shirts when I was uh, working there for Summer Youth. 
and, a... and, 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 you know, the irony of all this, you've spent your life, your career in the education system. Oh, yeah. I mean, I always give back. I mean, I, I sort of connect with uh, young teenagers, especially uh, urban um, teenagers. Uh, I just I, I, I connect with them. And, how, how many uh, years? How many years now have you? Oh, been... wow. Uh, easy, easy. Uh, I would say almost 30 years now. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. 30. Yeah. 30 years. Uh, I mean, I still, to this day, I, I teach uh, kids out in Brooklyn. Nice. And so here, uh, I, I believe this is 1983. Oh, yeah. That was uh, Lucky Strikes with the Dynamic Rockers. I went on tour with them. They um, used to do clubs uh, like wow, in Chicago. Wait, wait, pause, pause for a second. I didn't... I, I yeah, have no dude. Idea. You go from <laughs> you, what? You go from rock steady to Yo, dynamic rockers. Hey, I, you know I, I'm rock steady all day, but you know the thing is, is like I, I had to get some some money. You know, I had to, you know, I mean these these gigs were good paying gigs. You know, so and then also you get to travel. You know, those uh, frequent flyer miles they add up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they were cool dudes too man they were they were good man they were good people and uh you know we we did a couple of clubs out in long island uh the smart bar in chicago and uh you know just uh i was djing back then too so i did a little djing and you know made some money that way as well because you know it was a it was a good source of income but it also allowed you to be creative i mean you know playing that music especially that new york style music you know i i, I mean even at the roxy uh africa islam used to let me get on before he got on and forget it that that was the that was it for me yeah great great memory right there Oh yeah, um, man. So going back to the clubs, you know, one of the one of the coolest projects, one of the very interesting projects that you and myself, A1, and I forget who else was a part of this project with Antonio Lopez for the release of Antonio Girls. And oh, yeah. Antonio Lopez, for those that don't know, was a Puerto Rican fashion illustrator, the the premier fashion illustrator coming out of the sixties. Amazing, and 70s. phenomenal. One of oh, the most stunning. phenomenal artists and talents uh, of the time. And yeah, he, he knew everyone. He knew everyone back oh, then. Oh, yes. From he war. Was, he, he was, was a part superstar. Of war. Yeah, he was a superstar illustrator. And he found, you know, Grace Jones, Pat Cleveland, and uh, Jerry Hall here. And yeah. his world was fashion, but he was a, a New Yorker who was always on the pulse of New York. And oh, so yeah. he, he had this, this, this event lined up and he reached out to Henry mm -hmm. and I, I, I think Marty perhaps and said, look, I want to do some graffiti in here and some break dancing. And they invited Rocksteady oh. crew to perform. And uh, yeah. we, we got to, to uh, do some paintings inside of Studio 54. Yeah, that was great. That was fun. I mean, that, that, that was like uh, first uh, professional paying job. You know, and, and later on, you know, we became good friends. We were always in a studio. Uh, you know, I used to make music for him. I used to plan out music for his shows. Um, I also used to go get art supplies and I, he used to lend me the studio. I would paint at his studio. He would he would uh, sort of uh, tell me to to try this, try that. And, and Juan Ramos was another person, too, that was uh very gifted i mean his his uh, yeah. use of color and and his whole layout he yeah was, they, uh, they he were was super a talented great artist. In, yeah. in this picture uh i see tags here by fab five freddy crazy Leg. oh yeah yeah Take. yeah yeah well you know people we, we gotta we gotta get up <laughs> definitely you know that was uh i think um uh, on the other side was A1. Uh, you know, we had, we, the whole dance floor was full. Yeah, who, who else? I, I, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I think Dose, Dose did a piece Dose. there. Yeah, yeah, he did a yeah. rock, I think he did a, yeah, he did a rock steady. 
Because in the entryway, I did a big, as you walk in, a big graffiti piece. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, I don't, and I, yeah, I, no, that, that, that place was amazing at the time. Yeah. I mean, that was So that was I want to go back to this thing about music. This is one of your early paintings. But again, you mentioned, right. you mentioned that connection to music. Um, right. And people do not know you as a DJ. Yeah, no, I was, I was uh, flying back and forth from New York to Boston and I've done some, some gigs in Chicago, but Boston, I played pretty much every club over there. And then I was, uh, you know, had like from Thursday all the way to Sunday. And it was, uh, it was a, a great job. I mean, you know, getting paid to play music. And then I was, it allowed me to paint in the daytime. So, you know, also, not only that, but it gave me ideas for, for paintings uh, to, to do certain, uh, you know, to listen to some of the music, the beats, you know, the connecting it with the dancing. And then sometimes I used to practice my routines right on the dance floor. You know, I would just put on a long um, record and just hit the dance floor. That was fun. Nice. And, and one of the things um, early on, you start exploring painting, which was also very interesting to me. You, you became part of, you know, uh, Ramel. This is a Ramelzi painting that we're looking at, um, right. and it, it it looks like a letter B. Um, you connect it with Ram, and and Ram had this, you know, his own. Yeah, he had his theory. own uh, yeah his own theory, his philosophy. I mean, you know, he used to every time you hung out with Ram, he would talk about that. He would talk about how in architecture, you know, that you would see these rockets, and you know, he um, used to arm your your letters and you know have that whole science behind it. Right, and he would, and he, he was a visionary. It, Right, I, I, iconoclast futurism or, or gothic futurism, panzerism, um, and this would this would let let's talk about that about his influence or this idea of of kind of this very futurist type of graffiti that right. you start doing, um, and and what we're looking at now is kind of a result of 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 that um, in your work. Yeah, I used to do a lot of drawings like that when I was in art and design because later on, that became my show. So all my class assignments <laughs> had graffiti in it. And, you know, uh, pretty much after, you know, having him come to my studio with Henry, uh, he was always, you know, uh, dissecting my paintings. He would look at my paintings and then tell me, oh, you know, you shoot your missiles from your T and he used to call me, you know, T1. And he used to uh, show me this, this stuff in my paintings that I never really looked at it that way. And then he would, he would, um, you know, talk about arming your letters. So I, I, it just got me in that direction. And, you know, I started doing tanks and stuff like that uh, with right, uh, my right. name. And and you know what? I have some good examples of that to share with people. And and um, yeah, that was the invitation to the Yaki Kornblit Gallery. Right. So I wanted to let, let's talk about that because you know, as you're starting to explore this new style, and of course, Ramelzi uh, being among some of the early writers to head out to Europe. Uh, and here we have one of your paintings next to a Lee painting. Oh uh, yeah. Let's yeah, talk that was... about that, that. Those early days of heading out to Europe. Uh, with that group well that that was that was great because you know that opened up some more doors because the 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 gallery was the gallery in in the first gallery to show that graffiti in in Holland and I mean everyone was there uh, Dondi uh, Zeff Fatura Ramelzi Blade Crash I mean, a long list of, of uh, great artists. And, you know, I remember when I was there, Lenny was there at the same time, and we, we were taking some photos of Amsterdam, and we went by the uh, Heineken Brewery. 
and we were taking some pictures of it. So later on that night, Lenny and I went to this place to, to throw up some pieces. And he did a piece and I did a piece of a section of war, which is in a book now at the Dutch library. But we went up to the train station and I was like, oh, I want to get up some more tags. So uh, I was putting up tags and then Lenny started walking away from me. <laughs> and he says, he says, yo, you know, there's cameras here. And I said, oh, so we, we jet it the next day. The police come to the gallery and they're like, <laughs> and they knock on the door. Yaki answers the, the door and, and they were like, what are you guys doing taking pictures of the Heineken Brewery? And at the time, the uh, president of the company was kidnapped. So they thought we had something to do with it. And it was like Yaki was explaining to them that, no, we were just, you know, we're from New York and we're just taking pictures. But Lenny and I stood at the same hotel, too. And, you know, afterwards, like four o'clock in the morning, we would go and throw up some pieces. So there was this building there, like four o'clock in the morning, I'm piecing on it. And all of a sudden, I started getting all this traffic. I said, wait a minute. So I left. The next morning, I go there, and it turns out it was a bank. <laughs> I was like, man, i never forget that. That's like... That was some, some good times. Eh? And so, you know, as a young kid, all of you going there at this point, what was the, the reaction, right, of, of, of the people there, uh, the young kids and the people who were coming to the Oh, camp? Amsterdam, they loved it. I mean, the, the, every opening was packed. All the paintings pretty much sold. So, you know, it was... Uh, but, I mean, a great opportunity because at the same time I was in art design. So, I mean, talk about real world experience to go out there and have a one man show at a gallery overseas. I had to get special permission from art design to go and and the, the rest is history, man. I went out there and, and had a great show which led to a museum show down the line because other collectors started collecting more pieces and, you know, the uh, mu museum show had a great lineup too. I mean, phase two, uh, Ram, uh, Dandi, you know, Futura, you know, that's a, that's a great catalog out and uh, it has like some, some like just toxic, some, some back to back paintings, you know, just some, the whole book is, is just amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. And so you return back to the States and um, one, you know, by that point, Style Wars and Wild Style had happened. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden Beat Streets uh, comes up. Uh, talk to me about this project because you had you had a, a significant role in this. Yeah, it was phase two and I, we, we did a lot of uh, drawings for them and, you know, they were, you know, taking the drawings. But what happened was, is that they they didn't want to take like a, a phase two or, or Bill Blast drawing. Well, at the time I was writing Wise, but you know, they wanted Raymo pieces. So I designed a few Raymo pieces and then they wouldn't allow us to, to paint them, which I thought, you know, would have been much better if they would have let phase two and I do the painting. But because of the union, we couldn't, we were not able to do it. And, you know, I, I was the main guy who took Raymo around. So he was pretty much, you know, studying, you know, my, my style and stuff like that. So he uh, used to do some pieces right there in Rocksteady Park, which I had him do. And then I took him down to the tunnels. And, you know, he loved it. But the next day they were like at Beach Street productions they were like ah you don't have to go that far <laughs> so yo you want to be a writer you, you know you, you, have you gotta to, live you have it to live it you gotta go down there and see what it's about that adrenaline you know your heart pumping i mean you know there's there's a rush and and like you know he, instead of acting it you gotta live it yeah 
Yeah, because if this is art, you know, mimicking life, and you you've you've been living this real life that was filled with a lot of risk. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean it. it um, I mean like painting on the elevated that got me prepared to do larger scale work, and then being on top of scaffolding when you're you know five stories up. You kind of conquer that fear when you're you're painting up there, you know, and you realize, you know, you you have this uh, balance, and you know, you focus on uh, on on doing uh, your piece. And it's dangerous, but you know, you also overcome a lot of fear. And you know, with with art, it's like just to to do art. Sometimes you you know, you're like you want it. You see a vision, you want it to come out perfect and you know you you want to create your your best image possible so you know it's always overcoming a lot of fear so uh, you know on the heels of this you, you know you're continuing with some commercial work um and there's a great project that you and i became a part of in 1986 uh with uh, all, another all-star cast right yeah. the, the the art train project uh, which was done in Detroit, another project curated by Henry. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe Marty was also part of this, actually. Uh, but uh, this is interesting. This train says our train, but this is not what you painted. That uh, was one of the submissions. Um, that's one of the submissions, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so later, later on, it was an auction in Paris. Right. And so the lineup was really incredible, wasn't it? It was... Uh, oh, yeah, that was, that was a was, squad. Oh, yeah, we had Lee Quinones, we had Dondi, Zephyr, Duster, Lady Pink. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, no, not Lady Pink. She wasn't there, right? No. Uh, Core. Core, Vulcan, Phase, Me, Kel, uh, this woman. Futura. Kids, Futura, yeah. And so, and, you know, what's, what's really interesting about this project, and here's a, your whole car. Again, uh, Lady Liberty shows up. Mm -hmm. um, and M MLK at the end of the card. Tell us about this production, how, how you went from that first presentation to this one. Well, I, I, I used to draw a lot. So that was uh, uh, the theme that I was trying to, you know, tie the American dream and I have a dream together. And then that whole middle section, that dream like of the... Uh, the bubbles floating up so you know it, it uh was uh, uh they loved it they you know it was like the first car to get sponsored by uh, gil silverman so that they loved the concept and they also uh wanted me to to do that one there over the other design that i did but that was an interesting project because you know it, it went from different places with pop art and photo surrealism in it. And uh, that was a, a, a really great experience. Had, had they have kept these trains? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, no, those, yeah. those were. I, I loved, my car was a tribute to Shy. Yeah, that was amazing. And, and Baudet, it was a tribute to Shy and Baudet. And, and uh, you know, I did the drawing and uh, um, laid it out and I told Kel, to come paint with me mm -hmm. and and then uh i thought we were gonna paint the whole car by ourselves they put futura on with us i remember not being happy about it but then we were good about <laughs> it yeah, plenty's dope you know but i thought i was gonna do a whole car you know yeah. but uh this was a special project and and you know the again going back to the idea you know thematically you know you had social awareness in your work right uh, is very important Oh, absolutely. I mean, because, you know, it, it's, it's your voice. It's the way you, you know, you get to say things that you feel because it's from within, you know, and we are creators. So you want to create your best image possible. Yeah, this is this was a great, great car. And here we have a picture of uh, oh, you boy. and Lee. I mean, the resolution isn't great, but I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, no. I remember I mean, you and your, yeah, your doctor. 
<laughs> yeah, those were the best smocks, though. You know, you just put them on and your scrubs, cover up my scrubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And here's another yeah. painting again where Lady Liberty shows up. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, you know, because one day I knew that the sky's the limit wasn't going to be around, so I wanted to capture it on canvas. So I did, I did this painting. But, you know, this is uh, somewhere out in Europe right now. This so now if we go back to your work and we look at something like this with these trains, you, you clearly see the influence that uh, panzerism, gothic futurism, I can't quite tell. Yeah, yeah. I armed, I armed the trains. I you armed the missiles. trains. Yeah. Yeah, no, those were, that was a, a small... Um, size canvas, but it was uh, a ni nice one. I like that piece. And again, you're referencing your your mural here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, the the canvas outlives the wall. You know, you definitely you you uh, concentrate on putting your work to preserve it. You want it to last. Uh, you know, uh, be around. When you're long gone there, yeah, yeah, no, that, yeah, that drawing was in, is in Paris. And uh, this was uh, just a number two pencil. But, you know, so these, are, these are plans for, for a wall. I mean, these things, right. you know, I used to do them at Art Design. So now, the, the, the subject of your work, though, right, I always found interesting because there's, it's almost like a future primitivism th kind of thing that you have going on, right? Uh, right. With Egyptology, uh, iconography, but also, of course, graffiti style, but again, adapting the, some of the, the philosophy of, of Ramelzi. Right. Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, you think of uh, Egyptian, like hieroglyphics, you know, so you got, wild style sort of you you know if you didn't know how to connect pieces you didn't know how to read it but they some people would just see colors or an abstraction you know? yeah and this is interesting this is one of your really really early works very fantasy yeah. filled oh um, yeah no ram ram loved this piece you know he uh he um actually uh took me to this collector's house and told her to buy it <laughs> did she buy it no, actually, she didn't. She didn't buy it. She um, she uh, didn't buy this one, but it sold later down down the line. So yeah. it seems like there's a lot of your work in in Europe. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, all of it goes over with is overseas. Yeah, this uh, this one too uh, is in, in now in Paris. It's, uh, that's uh, Ken Swift doing the backspin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And again, more of your early works from the early 80s. like. Oh, yeah, no, this I used to do that uh, with the um, with a, a palette and splat and just do the background and then layer it. Yeah, those are fun. I mean, the, you know, to, uh, to do that type of work, it's uh, freedom, you know, you don't it just sure. Uh, develops, I, I mean, yeah. it's interesting. The lower, the, the 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 painting on the lower half of the screen uh, reminds me of what, some of the contemporary things that a lot of people have been practicing. Yeah, and that was in the eighties. Uh, that was like eighty two or something like that. Eighty three around that time period. Yeah, but I had a studio in Boston, mm -hmm. and I used to uh, have these roommates, and they were punk rockers, and they used to splash paint on on some of my canvases and then i had to like go over it <laughs> yes so, so this so, is a, this is a this one and this painting and and this painting is a departure from it seems from your other other work mm -hmm. um tell me about well, this well, do, well, well you know i'm just uh uh right here is uh some more Egyptian um, imagery, but that that was a plan to do for a mural. 
big piece. Uh, and then I started um, doing some of the sections, uh, experimenting with uh, spray paint and oil. So do the background and spray paint and then do layers of oil on top of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now this was uh, about crack, that one. This one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, because you, you could see yeah, the crack. Because you see the guy, little guy in the crack, yeah. And and here, I mean, clearly, Ramel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that was the, the, uh, the blast piece. a tank. That was a tank, you know, the conversations with him about arming your letters and having a formation. Those, uh, that was uh, one of my tanks. So, get, you know, in terms of that practice, right, of, of you know, helping us understand, help us understand this a little bit more about the aims of, of Gothic futurism and iconoclast panzerism. Well, I mean, in order to destroy another piece, you arm your piece. So that's why, you know, it has all of the, the, the missiles and, and all of the, uh, the battle gear on it. Yeah. This is a really nice piece. What became of yeah. this? Yeah. Sold. Uh, I sold it. Right. Yeah. And if we leap, if, if we leap frog forward, and I like this because yeah, it's blueprint years later, um, uh, letters a, a bit more sophisticated, but the energy, and of course, you know, it's you have the nose of an airplane. Yeah, because uh, their variation is one by land, one by sea, you know, by sea I had, uh, one by air. So it was the elements, you know, so it's that, yeah. Really that, nice. that, yeah. Um, uh, but also you, you've, you've done some big commercial projects, um, and this one several years ago. Yeah, that was, that was a great project. Uh, uh, Most Violent Year, it was a movie, and they used a lot of my archive stuff in there, but uh, they, they did layers on top of it. So I had it in my contract uh, that if anyone goes over me, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had different names. I had my son's name. And they would layer it on top of it, and you'll see it like in the movie. Right. But uh, I, I also use that two near pause inside yeah. that movie. Yeah. Well, you, you know, one of the things I like, Bill, is that for me, this is this is what I love talking about, right? That intersection between vandalism and advertising, and and how they become one, right? Mm -hmm. How we've gotten to do these big campaigns. And then see our names and our work bigger than we could have ever done ourselves. Yeah, no, I mean, you, it's public space, you know, and uh, they, they really work together well. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, this was the inside. So, you know, it was, it was uh, fun to uh, do that, the tags in the inside. I put up everyone pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you've also worked for Mar Marty Scorsese. Yes, yes. That was a fun project, too. This that. project here, Vinyl. Tell, tell me yeah. about this project. Well, you know, I, I had to go to a studio uh, right by the, um, on, on 18th Street, right, by the uh, Red Bull spot. And they had this, this uh, loft up there. So I just went in there and just did some tags for them. And then I started... Uh, you know, sort of directing where where they should be at to, you know, make it look authentic. Like I got some some Gene 13 tags there. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, and then some Tunia tags in the inside. Yeah, yeah, I see a mare yeah. tag. Oh, yeah, man, you know, I got to got to put up no, my, peep, my peeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no, but I love was the, the wise man. I mean, you, you nailed it. Yeah, no, definitely, man. That was fun. That was fun. I, I, you know, that's like, you know, you would see in the inside, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love it because then again, you know, if, if I go to see this, you know, this is real life and this is a painting, right? This is a contemporary painting. So you see there's no disconnect in your, in your life's work experience, right? You're, 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 
extending that into you, yeah. you know that memory and that history and that texture. Uh, yeah, that's back, a pretty big back painting. Back into the work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that was yeah that was a, a painting that I uh, sold in Detroit, and it's interesting how it, it changes hands because it was just in Paris now. So from Detroit, it winds up in Paris. So given, given, let's explore this for a second. Given, uh, you know, at that young age, when you were exhibiting in Europe and, and having your first museum show at what, 17, 18, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. to see where we are today, right. which is quite phenomenal, where your work now is in collections, it's in the Museum of Modern Art, as well in their collection, what, how do you make sense of all this? Man, I mean, that's something that I'm, I'm humbled, man. I mean, that's a dream, you know, to be part of uh, the MoMA collection, uh, to have museum exhibitions. You know, this is uh, why you work hard. You know, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna achieve those goals. You know, you always but uh, when, trying but to... But when did you start having those goals? Um, I think, I think, uh, when, when I went to Amsterdam and saw that people were collecting my work and then we had that museum show in Rotterdam and, you know, uh, that, that was like, you know, you're on a good path, stay on that path, you know? So it was, it was, uh, kind of a, a no brainer. Like, you know, this is, you know, what I love to do. Not, not not bad for a kid from the projects. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. I I mean, I uh, I I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, I had. I, That's a great I mean, song, by the way. Yeah. And you're a DJ, but listen, you know, I I I'm so happy you took the time to to share your story with us, right? Because, um, you, you know, you've been busy in other areas of your life and this thing exploded, right? And mm -hmm. there's a foundation. You were part of a, a very special time in giving the world a look at yeah. this art, an opportunity to participate uh, and to collect. Um, and that was really important. That proved to be very, very important. Yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, you think, I think about, you know, uh, ab abstract expressionism, how like they didn't accept it at first. Mm -hmm. And then graffiti, at first, they didn't really accept it. But now, look at it now. Global. And it's still growing. So, I mean, I, I, I'm very humbled when people leave messages that, you know, I saved their life because they had no direction. And then they, they get into painting. Or the yeah. reason why they paint is because the work that I've done. So that that's... That, that that's a reward you know yep. and, I, didn't, and, I, didn't, I didn't smoke the illy but <laughs> <laughs> lucky you i, I painted <laughs> but but that, that was the way really i got cool. I, I mean you're students right the kids that come across your path uh, I, I mean you're such a humble guy and you're unassuming they have no clue do they uh, about this world mm -hmm. right they, they yeah, they, yeah, they, they, there's some of them that do. I mean, they always, they, they get happy when they see me. But uh, for the most part, you know, uh, the kids are just like about, you know, uh, the music and, you know, the girls, you know, they're Nothing's into that. changed then. Yeah, there's nothing, yeah. Nothing, <laughs> nothing's nothing changed. really changed, yeah. Yep. But, uh, you know, it's always good to, 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 sort of uh, let them know that they can create as well. So what, what's, what's in the future for you? What's, what's cracking next? Oh, well, you know, I'm painting a lot. So exhibitions, um, you know, doing some other projects, uh, just, you know, working out on some finer details, teaching, um, you know, just staying busy. Nice. So, uh, what's up, Ken Swift? We're talking about oh, you. Oh, Ken uh, if you guys, Swift. If you guys uh, um, have any quick questions before we log off, big up. shout out to you Ken have anything Swift. To shout out. I see you part. Uh, I see you, Sean. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, 
I guess if I have a question for you, I think it would be like, why did you stop DJing? Well, I got, you know, lugging records around and uh, space issues and, you know, moving here and there, but I loved it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it um, gives you ideas. I mean, just those beats. And then, you know, you think of uh, some of the messages in the songs, you know, comes through the work, but, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta have the, the right connections in order to play in the big spots. Yeah. So, so I, you know, there's, there's something that was just posted that's really intriguing. Sky's the limit 3000. Are we oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 COVID. <laughs> um, somebody's asking what was the artwork at Rocksteady Park done with the D? The DL? The D? the DL? I, I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, I don't know what that is either. The DL. Somebody's asking where they can buy your art. Can you give well, them your, give them your uh, web, website address? Yeah, you can give them my website. Also, I have well, a, you, a, you, a shop. You, please, well, please Bill, provide Bill the info. Blast on, on Instagram. You can always uh, click the link below. There's a couple of... Uh, on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And your Instagram is uh, Bill, Bill B -I dot B I double L dot blast B L A S T. Yep. Uh, somebody's asking who painted the rainbow pieces in Beach Street? Well, I designed them, but a uh, scenic artist painted it. And some of the stuff they did with brushes, you know, I, um, I did the, uh, the landscape rainbow piece. I did a couple of drawings, which, and FaZe did a couple of drawings that they mixed and matched. So they would use sections of uh, one drawing and a section of another drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, that one mural, uh, you can't really see it because they weren't able to paint it, but it had a landlord with money coming out of his pockets <laughs> and uh, the buildings burning in the background. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, yeah, that was a piece that of, one. yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody's asking about prints. They can go to your Instagram and website to get them. Uh, also, a question here, uh, which writers did you have beef with growing up? Beef? Uh, it's all good for me, man. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't really, like, uh, lose any sleep over that stuff. Right, right. You know, I, I don't, you know, I, I keep I saw moving. Brother Crime in here pose a question. <laughs> uh, was it done on the down low or permission? I don't know what he's referring to. Um, on, on the down low? Let's see. Was the artwork done? It? Uh, was the Rocksteady Park done on the down low? That's what he's ask, here asking. No, that was, that was a community getting together. I mean, they provided you know, lunches, uh, lights, mm -hmm. ladders, all of that, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I've been lucky. They, I had a studio at Joan of Arc and it was on oh, the top Oh, yes, floor. I remember that. No, that place was, that was a great bomb. studio. Cross ventilation, two terraces. And, yeah, you know, you had it just, good. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also uh, received a few grants to to paint the walls in uh yeah. around that school. Yeah. And and this was an interesting fact. I never knew Futura went to that school. He was there before me. And I was like hanging out with him. He was like, yeah, I went to Joan of Arc. <laughs> yeah, so that was a that was a great school for me because I had my own studio. Yeah. And and you know, I was able to do some some large scale projects, yeah. stretch out. I remember visiting. I mean, I lived time. right around the corner for a while. Yeah, that that area was great. I mean, they, to to have to have that opportunity was was uh was a blessing. For sure. So, um uh, I'm going to wrap this up with you, man, and on behalf of myself and my crew here at the Museum of Graffiti, Bill, um we love you. We thank you for everything you've done uh, mm -hmm. and continue to do. I, I, I know, man, you're a good spirit and you pass that on to the kids that cross your path. Oh, yeah. um, so much respect for you for that. Um, and of course, you know, for helping in, in your way to kind of um, uh, 
pave a, a wider road so all these kids, all these new artists can uh, participate in, in, in the art market, let's just say. Yeah, I mean, you know, they just got to uh, put in the work. That's it. Cool. That's, yeah. Thank you, Kenny. I see Kenny out there, my brother, the legend, Ken Swift. Ken Swift. Um, <laughs> Cos Rock. Cos. <laughs> You know, Ian, I see you. Some good, good attendance. Oh Thank you, guys. Uh, we really appreciate you supporting us. Also, uh, so you guys know, this will be on our Instagram IGTV, but also on Ian our YouTube master. channel. We we have all the videos and all the talks for people to go back and and uh, you know catch up with with uh, some of these conversations. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Big up the cars, 207 in the house. Marcus answers here. Okay, so oh, guys. Oh, Iron design okay. in the house. Yes, Os Gemios, all the way from Brazil. As a matter of fact, Os Gemios, oh, what's up, brother? Um, I, I know Alan and Allison are out there. Give them a big what's up for us. Um, crime, I see you, my brother. And so, yeah, like I said, this has been really special because you and I go way, way oh, back. Oh, man, we, we're family. We're family. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, man. Uh, Oddly enough, we kind of start as we're getting older, we're looking more and more alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Allison's here. Allison, what's up, Allison? Um, oh, wow. But you, you know, I, I think these are the things. See, what's what's really interesting? These these stories, these little anecdotes, right? That help put together a really complicated puzzle. Oh. And and you know, I hear so much debate about this culture and it's, it goes every which way. And, um, and, and the only thing I, the lane I like to, I, I'm most comfortable with, cause I've seen a lot is these people that I grew up with. Right. And you're one of them, people who, who uh, were in the trenches early and young and were there at the time right in, in particular that time where it was transitioning off the trains right mm -hmm. all the commercial work we were doing the kind of inroads we were making uh and and the, again like you pointed out being at you know studio 54 being in europe you know you know working on movie sets um you know that stuff was unheard of yeah so it was uh i mean it's a uh... I wouldn't change a thing. I swear, they, we we had some some big fun, man. You know the uh, the the opportunities and stuff that we've done was 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 uh, a good perfect time for it. I mean, the eighties, you know, the golden years. They were good. Nineties were yeah. pretty good too. Yeah, nineties too. Nineties. <laughs> <That's not complete. laughs> so my brother, I'm gonna leave you in two. Um, in 2021, 2021. Uh, I hope I hope when all this settles down, you come visit us at the museum. Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. And, I love spend, Miami. Yeah, yeah. Miami. Come spend some time with me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, brother. And all and it everybody is out there, we want to thank you all again for supporting us, um, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. All right, my brother.